February 20th, 1933. Hermann Gehrig, the president of the Reichstag in Germany, calls a meeting of 25 of the most successful businessmen in all of Germany. He invites them to his home, a beautiful mansion in Berlin. They all wear their best business suits and come in the front door making their way up a large staircase to a beautiful big room on the second floor. Gehrig is late, which was his custom to be fashionably late. He arrives about 20 minutes after he called the meeting, but goes around the room shaking everyone's hand and greeting them and thanking them for coming. He then stands in front of them. They're gathered around a large table. And he starts explaining that there's going to be an election in Germany on March 5th, just a few weeks away. If they want to see their businesses become more successful, it's important that they invest in the right candidates for this election. They back them financially. Into the room walks Adolf Hitler. He explains that Germany must battle communism. It's so important for private enterprise. And they also must battle democracy, which actually produces communism. I'm not sure how he got there. He explains that the Nazi party is poised and ready to sweep the elections, but their coffers are empty. They need three million marks. If these men invest in the Nazi party, they can be guaranteed that their businesses will be protected. Germany will thrive. Hitler leaves the room, and Gehrig says, all right, everybody, pony up. They're really accustomed to this. They do it often. Together, they raise two million marks in that one meeting. Years later, those that survived said, They really didn't think about it much. Seemed like a good investment. Isn't it fascinating how evil often comes into our lives? It often doesn't confront us head on, but sort of slithers in the room because we're not really paying attention because our priorities are not established in the right way. When our highest goal is to better ourselves instead of to do what's right. None of those men really thought much that day. In the gospel for today, Jesus says, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. By the word heart, in the scripture, Jesus was not just referring to that organ that pumps blood around our bodies, though that's part of it. But the heart was a fuller meaning. It meant the soul. It meant life itself. It meant the source of love and life that generates out of each person. Jesus was trying to explain that where your heart is, where you attach yourself, there your soul is attached to that thing. So if you attach your love and your desire to something like money or things, those things 
turn to dust. Your soul will not make it to heaven if you attach yourself to things that are temporal, to things that ultimately don't matter at all. Oh, we're so confused in our culture. We believe that our net worth means how worthy we are when it really just means where you can go to eat at a restaurant. So I ask you this morning, where is your treasure? Where do you attach your heart? What do you really love? Because whatever that is, that's going to determine where your soul goes. It's that important. We did a beautiful funeral yesterday for a guy who actually hated going to church. He was in his late 90s and refused to go to church his whole life. I can't tell you how many relatives came up to me and said, Dean Kate, is he going to get to heaven? As if that's my job to answer that question. I know I have a degree called a master in divinity, but that's preposterous. No one masters divinity, and only God knows who gets into heaven. But I can tell you this, this man loved his family, and his family, well, they all went to church. In fact, he lived on the same property as his older brother. They would always check on each other by seeing who got the newspaper. If his brother needed anything, he was always there. This man had attached his heart, his treasure to his family, and his family were quite devout. In fact, they knew it would make him mad to have a funeral in the church, but they did it anyway, <laughs> and then laughed about it. This morning, we're going to baptize three beautiful children. Eliza, who is a newborn baby girl from one of our Sudanese families who have just come here to this country. Fox, who's 11 years old and very smart and really amazing young man. And little Koi, who turned one yesterday, and I had the honor of marrying his parents. How many years ago is it now? Ten? That can't be right. Oh, five. Okay, five. That's better. Three beautiful children. And our order, the Brotherhood of St. Andrew, who are the men's prayer order, have created these beautiful hope chests in the back of the church because today begins the most important relationship of their lives. You see, we want them to find their treasure in God. We want them to have a love relationship with the one who made them. And those little chests in the back are a lot like hope chests. You remember how women used to have hope chests and they would plan their wedding and put things in them? These are for the love of their life. And we hope that they're going to put things about God in this chest and keep them. It's hard to love someone that we can't see that we can't touch, that we can't hear unless we pray really hard, and even then sometimes it's hard to hear. But if we can learn to love God, that means our soul is connected to the divine. Remember the story of Abraham that we heard about in the book of Hebrews. Abraham loved God so much that he was willing to leave all of his stuff behind. He lived in a great city. He left everything he knew and moved out into the desert because he believed that's what God wanted. Everyone thought he was crazy, but he was investing in something that lasted do we remember any of the other guys at that time? No. Who do we remember? We remember that crazy old man who moved out into the desert because he loved God. And we all are his descendants now. 
So parents and godparents, this day, it's more important than their wedding. This is the day that they form the most important relationship in their lives. So keep telling them the story about Jesus, okay? Keep telling them how much he loves them. Sing songs to them. Read them stories from the Bible. Let their hearts grow in the love and knowledge of God because God is the one person who will never leave them, never betray them, who will always be there for them. And if they practice that love now and it grows in their hearts, it will bloom and blossom. And when they find themselves as adults in some meeting, in some strange meeting where something isn't happening right, they will know that this isn't something God would want. They will know they will do the right thing because their priorities are in the right order because their heart belongs to something more, something greater, something eternal. Amen.